This is something that I cannot get out of my mind. A single line of text from the tip card, Advantages of Normal Monsters, Part 2. Quote, Since monsters with good effects usually have lower attack and defense, your opponent will be left with nothing but weak monsters, which your normal monsters can easily destroy. End quote. My intuition says that the statement is false, that normal monsters were not appreciably stronger than effect monsters even at the time. Begging the question, were normal monsters stronger? For this video, I'm going to be looking at a dataset from the GOAT format card pool, which is more or less the card pool available when the tip card came out. There are inaccuracies in the data, like Cure Mermaid and Nuvia the Wicked being listed as normal monsters, as well as the potential omission of some monsters which I attempted to clean up. There are about 800 monsters in the spreadsheet, which I divided up by level. As for measuring the strength of a monster, there are a few ways to look at the problem. The most obvious way is to look at the single strongest normal monster and compare it to the strongest effect monster in each level. And we get this graph for maximum attack points. We can try to put a linear trend line on the graph to define a hypothetical Yu-Gi-Oh level curve, but I think the logarithmic curve looks better to capture the diminishing returns on higher level monsters. To me, it would make more sense for the curve to be a linear relationship where the attack points increase by 500 per star, which holds up fairly well until level 4, especially if we peek into the future at Gene Warped Warwolf, who represented the 2000 attack point barrier. The relationship then breaks down at level 5 and higher, where you would expect to see a 2500 attack level 5 monster, but instead there is a level 6 with those attack points. With that relationship, a level 8 monster should have a maximum of 4,000 attack points, but the mighty Blue Eyes White Dragon only has 3,000. And since Blue Eyes will always be the strongest normal monster, I don't anticipate this will change anytime soon. If I had to speculate about the 3,000 number, a duelist starts with 8,000 life points, and 3 Blue Eyes attacking directly total 9,000 damage. If they had 4,000 attack points, it would only take 2 to OTK. I like the logarithmic approach, but did you notice that the curves are very similar, with a couple effect monsters actually surpassing the strongest normal monster of the same level? Notably, White Magician Peruku over Pharaoh's Servant and Guardian Angel Joan over Wingweaver. These cards do not just have higher attack points, but beneficial effects. Coincidentally, both life gain. I actually think that Guardian Angel Joan is a design mistake, it's supposed to be a level 8 since it is so strong, and I know I have personally used the card with trade-in, assuming it to be level 8. As a quick aside, I tried to filter out effect monsters with a downside to balance their high stats. This includes monsters with drawbacks like Dark Elf, or with difficult summoning requirements like with Valkyrion the Magnet Warrior, which is otherwise way above curve on multiple metrics. Speaking of which, maximum attack is just one metric, and defense points mattered at least a little bit in 2005. Maximum defense also falls into a logarithmic curve, reaching the 3000 defense point mark at level 5 with Labyrinth Wall, which is notably a statistical outlier who is unmatched even by higher level normal monsters, and seems like a conscious design choice to make it so far above curve. There are also a couple level 1, very high defense point monsters, which throw off the curve significantly. I think part of the balancing philosophy was valuing attack points as more important than defense points to help explain this. I do also want to point out that there is a trade-off in specialization, where monsters which heavily favor either attack or defense often lack the other stat. To help weed out those more extreme monsters, we can look at the trend for the total attack and defense points for each level. Level 1 monsters with very high defense continue to distort the curve, but otherwise a linear trend seems more suitable this time. If we ignore this data point, it looks like effect monsters have very similar, if not greater, stat totals than the normal monsters. But just looking at the monsters with the highest stats does not give the whole picture so I am going to look at the average and median stats for each level. The median is included to help weed out some of the outliers, but Moisture Creature being the only eligible level 9 monster in the dataset messes with the curve. I am sure using a more recent dataset would help to decrease the impact of those outliers. 
but this is the card pool from the era. A similar trend holds true for the average and median defense points, and the average and median of total stats has really nice R values, meaning that the linear trend line approximation for the data is spot on, creating a really nice average curve to look about when designing new cards. And yet again, what sticks out to me is how similar normal monsters are to effect monsters in terms of stats, sometimes even being surpassed by effect monsters, and it really makes me doubt the claim from the beginning of the video. I think the reason why normal monsters were perceived to be stronger is because only the highest attack and defense point normal monsters saw any play, and as a result, the majority of normal monsters were ignored. There are a few standout normal monsters, which are way above curve, especially Giant Soldier of Stone, which is stronger in both attack and defense than Queen Bird, which is two levels higher than it and requires a tribute to be normal summoned. As alluded to previously, the inclusion of Gene Warped Warwolf and Frostosterus in Strike of Naos did raise the normal ceiling a bit and is one of the few times which can objectively be seen as power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh. But for the time, I do not think that normal monsters were stronger than effect monsters which seems to be a huge design oversight to me. But of course, mistakes are just a lesson waiting to be learned.